The bats? No. The snake? Oh. The lizard? Mm. And the rats? Mm. Oh, oh, girl's worst nightmare. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I mean, just got to watch where you're walking. Like that, that I don't, I'm, I am not an animal person. I'm not. But those things right there, I, that's something I can't. I think you can survive a week. A week? Yeah, you can survive a week. <sighs> it won't hurt. I think you're a TT this way and TT that way, but you'll be fine. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shots React, and, and we're back, back with another, another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road, road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Family, Samoa would be kind of like the kingpin great-grandfather. Technically, every Samoan is considered royalty. But it all comes down to how good of a royal can you be? I mean, sure, if you got ties to the Ainga Tupu, it helps. But anything is up for grabs in Ofono Omatai if your Falupenga is on point, And once you got the Tama A Ainga title, you can secure a spot as the Ola Ao Ola Malo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Geography. No! This is gonna be a fun episode. I love the Pacific Island nations because they are some of the least studied places on earth with some of the most vibrant stories and traditions. Also, yes, we did have a social media campaign to try and get Dwayne The Rock Johnson in this episode. Art and I actually kind of went up to his management office in Beverly Hills to see if we could reach out to him. Yeah, so we showed up at his management office and it was kind of awkward. They kind of looked at us like we're like from outer space or something like that. <laughs> yeah, we got told, we got rejected we so hard. We got rejected hard. so bad. It's like, <laughs> and then the whole coronavirus thing happened. Uh, so so uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to film with him anyway. So right. <laughs> we overshot the runway too much on this. We're worthless. Anyway, in compliance with social distancing practices, obviously Caleb and Jillian live in my house, so they're cool with being in these episodes. Art is one of my closest neighbors. We wa live within walking distance, so Art's going to be in these episodes too. And Just his mom makes really good chicken soup, so it's literally the only reason why I come over. Very right. And uh, we will have occasional guest stars, but only one at a time, Keith, Noah, and Hannah. That's how this is going to work out. All right, anyway, let's... Let's uh, jump into the episode. Samoa. You can't have Polynesia without starting and branching out from Samoa. All the Polynesian cousins sailed their ships out from Samoa at one point. And let's see where that point is on the map. The country is located in Oceania in the Pacific Ocean, specifically in the largest subregion known as Polynesia, shaped like a triangle starting in New Zealand, going up to Hawaii, and ending in Easter Island. Polynesia has over a thousand islands and archipelagos straddling millions of square kilometers of ocean territory. Samoa, though, is located about halfway between New Zealand and Hawaii, sandwiched between their cousins Tuvalu and Tonga. Now keep in mind the independent nation of Samoa is different from the U.S. overseas territory of American Samoa which sits at the shortest distance less than 100 miles or 160 American kilometers Samoa. away. Keep in mind though the most hmm. absolutely mind-boggling thing between these islands is that they are literally divided by the international date line which means they share the same time of day but are exactly 24 hours apart with American Samoa perpetually living in yesterday land and Samoa in tomorrow land. Technically you can go to the future or past okay. within a quick 35 minute flight between them. This is kind of why people typically- So it's kind of like day and night almost, or is it day and day, which is two different time frames? Time basically. frames. Basically, okay, yeah. Buy two one-way tickets instead of a round-trip package when traveling between the two islands. It's like, wow, American Samoa was pretty cool, but I think I'll just take one of those 35-minute flights over to the country of Samoa. When will I arrive? In just over 24 hours. Wait, what? How is that even possible? Well, when will I return? Yesterday. Yeah, it can be a nightmare if you've never done it before. In any case, the country is made up of two main islands that make up about 99% of the landmass, Upolu, where about 75% of the population lives, and Savai'i, which has the remaining 25%. In addition, there are other smaller islands and rocks, such as Manono and Apolima in the Apolima Strait, the four Alepata Islands in the east off the coast of Opolu, Nuutele, Nuuala, Fanuatapu, and Namua, and finally, small little in the south just by the town of Putasi. Out of these islands, the country is 
divided into 11 Itumalo, or political districts, which are actually tied into historical Samoan communities that predate European contact. And the capital of the country, Apia, is located on the north side of Opolu Island. The country has one main international airport, Faleolo International. Otherwise, the country has three other regional airports on Savai, whereas Upolu has this extra one, but it was closed in 2019, but it might reopen. The locals are always arguing about it. From there, each island has a ring road that goes around the coasts, and ferry services operate between the islands daily, as well as ferries and flights between them and the U.S. territory of American Samoa. Keep in mind, all together, Samoa and American Samoa are collectively just called the Samoan Islands. However, sometimes to make the distinction, you might hear the titles Western Samoa for Samoa and American Samoa or East Samoa for the U.S. territory of American Samoa. Yeah, in 2011, they actually moved the country's date ahead one day and skipped December 30th. This was actually done to kind of boost their trade relations with New Zealand and Australia. It was like, hey, New Zealand, it's Friday. Let's do some export deals. Oh, sorry, man. Even though you're like one longitude length away, it's Saturday here and our offices are closed on weekends, man. Oh. <laughs> All right, look, man, this is ridiculous. This whole you being in yesterday thing is kind of stupid. Just switch it up and join our side. Eh, you're right. Hey, American Samoa. No, I'm good. Fun fact, each Itumalo actually kind of has their own constitution called a Fa'ava'e, based on the order of each district's falupenga. What is a falupenga? Basically, it's like a special greeting that each of the district chiefs have to memorize when they go and visit another district chief. So it's like a passcode or something. No, it's a formal greeting acknowledging the history and lineage of the village and introducing yourself based off of your lineage and history. And it's all mm. spoken in proper Samoan. So it's like a Shakespearean greeting. Eh, kind of? You have to be very eloquent if you're going to be one of the orator chiefs. For example, like this. Anyway, if you decide to visit some top notable spots that you guys, the Samoan geography suggested I mention in this episode include the Market or Maketifu, the Samoan Cultural Village, the Robert Louis Stevenson Museum, the EFKS Museum of Fine Arts, the Falea Lupo Ruins, Mosul's Footprint, the Salea Ula Lava Field Ruins, yeah, the largest fale at the University of Samoa, the ancient star mound of Manono Island, the House of Rock, the Vanya Taole Alo Gallery, the Government House, there are many churches and places of worship like these, and there are so many natural spots and so many waterfalls, the most famous waterfall probably being Papapapaitai Falls, and there's so many caves as well, like the Dwarfs Caves and the Piula Cave Pools. The most famous notable spot in Landmark though would probably be the Pulemele Pyramid Mound. Also keep in mind they do have a lot of amazing beaches, but almost none of them are public because they are owned by families or villages, so oh. you'll have to pay a little fee to get on the beach. But anyway, speaking of beaches and natural to landscape... <laughs> Now, okay, I'm liking what I'm hearing so far. Yeah. I'm really interested in learning about the, the greetings more between right. the chiefs. Right. That seems interesting. Right. You know, and, and to learn learn their um the history of each of the chiefs. So that will be, you know, something cool. You know what it's reminded me of? Hmm. I forgot where it could have been Hawaii when they had to uh Maybe. what was it? When they had to pay for the beach? Nah, it was the tattoos. The oh, tattoos yeah, yeah. were similar to the the, the the I guess something they went through in life, mm -hmm. but you had to go through something for oh, yeah. uh, you to get the tattoo. And with yeah. them doing the memorable um, greeting, they'd have to remember it because mm -hmm. of their tribe. It kind of goes with that, yeah. so you got to remember something that is important to the people you're about to meet. Yeah. So I feel like that's some, you know what I'm well, saying. Well, it's hand hand. link, you know, the Polynesian culture. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Let's be for real. When you're in the middle of the ocean, alone and isolated, every little bit of land matters. And with Samoa, they got kind of the jackpot. First of all, Samoa lies on the Pacific Plate, right at the top of the Tonga Trench, part of a larger, highly volcanic area known as the Ring of Fire that circumvents the fringes of the entire Pacific Ocean. The volcanic activity is essentially what formed the islands, as it lies on the Samoa hotspot, one of many noted magma plume upwellings that can be found scattered throughout the oceans of the world. Only one volcano is classified as active, Mount Matavanu on Savai Island, which last erupted for six years continuously between 1905 and 1911. It formed about 40 square miles or 100 square kilometers of new land in the form of a lava field on the north side. The tallest peak of the country, though, is Mount Silisili. Yeah, and I'm always thinking about it, an island with a volcano, you get a little more land because of the hardness of the whatever. Yeah. It's just, though, like, look at the distance between the land marks and the, and the, the volcano. Like, there's a lot of space between. I don't know. No. Then I then he mentioned Probably. that it did it for like six years. Yeah. Straight. 
Yeah, it travels though. Yeah, 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 for real. I ain't trying to be around it when it erupt. Man. Which means highest, which is also located on Savai'i, and is a dormant stratovolcano. From here, the two longest rivers, the Vaimali and Maliolio rivers, flow downward from the central Savai'i mountain to, spine. Uh, the largest yeah, inland body of freshwater, however, is actually Lake Manoto'o, a small crater lake found on the top of a hill on Upolu Island, just south of the capital. As an equatorial nation, they fall within the monsoon climate zone, where temperatures are consistently warm almost year round, and mm. the rainy season lasts between November and April. Occasionally, they might find themselves in the past of tropical storms oh, or cyclones wow. as well. Another cool thing is that Samoa was kind of volcanically formed, a little different from all the other Polynesian islands. The distinct lava flow on the sides of Savai'i Island were carved by strong waves, creating a complex underground cave system that eventually tunneled upwards to the surface, which is where you get the famous alofaga or taga yeah, blowholes. These water jets are created by pressure that flows into the tunnels from the ocean. Sometimes people like putting coconuts on these water jets and then blasting them upwards. Now, as a tropical Polynesian nation, of course, yes, Samoa is very lush and green. About a fifth of the land is arable and about two thirds of the country are either employed or involved in agriculture. Agricultural products and fishing in themselves make up about 90% of exports, whereas the service sector employs about half of the workforce, mostly in tourism and hospitality, which make up about a quarter of their GDP. Nearly a quarter million people travel to Samoa and visit every single year. And the number has actually been growing quite a bit in the past few years as Polynesian travel publicity has skyrocketed, you know, with the help of notable Polynesian based movies and films films and stars highlighting their heritage. I mean, Hobbs and Shaw, dang, Mr. Rock, I will never forget that Uso battle scene or the helicopter car chain thing. That's Samoa! In addition, <laughs> Samoa is known for having a wide array of unique animal species. And with that, it's time for our animal correspondent, Gary Harlow, to step in. Jillian. Hey guys! Oh, <laughs> no! Um, Caleb's, I mean, Gary Harlow's not here right now. He's actually deworming a, a blue, uh, elephant but um uh oh, we okay. need someone to yeah. do this though a blue elephant okay like many other islands of the Pacific, Samoa doesn't have any endemic mammal species, the only true ones being bats and Polynesian rodents. Pigs, dogs, and cats are all over, but were introduced to the islands later by people. Otherwise, the country is loaded with reptiles like the native Samoan skink, the Polynesian gecko, oh. and the Pacific boa. Heaps oh. of marine species like parrot- I have come to love y'all. Y'all was so nice to us mm. in the last, our first video we did. It was the last video we did mm -hmm. about your culture. But y'all didn't tell us, y'all got everything I don't like. No. The bats. No. The snake. Oh. The lizard. Mm. And the rats. Mm. Oh, oh, girl's worst nightmare. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I mean, just got to watch where you're walking. Like that, that I don't, I'm, I am not an animal person. I'm not. But those things right there, I, that's something I can't. I think you can survive a week. A week? Yeah, you can survive a week. <sighs> it won't hurt. I think you're a TT this way and TT that way, but you'll be fine. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> fish, surgeon fish, yellowfin tuna, and whales, and birds are everywhere. Over 80% are endemic and found nowhere else on earth, like the Samoan flycatcher, the mao, fantail, and the national animal, the manumea, or two-filled pigeon. And that's it for me. Oh. Bye. Yay. Oh, oh. And now we finish off this segment as we always do. Food! Here are some of the top notable dishes of Samoa that you guys, the Samoan geography peeps, suggested I mention. Fai'ai eleni, palusami, fa'ali fu fa'i, otaia, suaia, fa'ausi, kopai, panipopo, pani keke, keke pu'a'a, keke saina, suafai. Fai'ai eleni, palusami, fa'ali fu fa'i, otaia, suaia, fa'ausi, kopai, pani popo, pani keke, keke pu'a'a, keke saina, fai'ai eleni, palusami, fa'ali fu fa'i, otaia, suaia, fa'ausi, kopai, pani popo, pani keke. That sweet banana fritters, now that looks like something that I can make on the channel. Definitely something that's fried. Yeah. You know, we like to fry food, so... It's a win-win. We talk yeah, about this I mean? all the time. See, we speak because we are one, so we speak as a unit. Big facts. But he say we. I don't like to fry food. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you just gonna cut <laughs> off my light? Hey, look, like, yeah. just, right, I'm just hyping up. I'm hyping you up. You just gonna cut my lights off. Okay. All right. He know I don't like frying food like that. I love fried chicken, but anyway. But that look fried, though. That look good. And that look like Sweet it's deep fried, too. Fritters. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have a recipe to this, let us know. We only do our authentic stuff all right so follow our family channel life with them and we'll cook it up hey bless a friend so we can bless a friend yes there you go
Keke, Keke Pu'a'a, Keke Saina, Suafai, and very often at celebrations or occasions yeah, or even just on Sundays, you'll see the umus happening all the time. Of course, yeah, Samoans yeah. are incredibly communal people. They take filial piety and ancestor veneration to a whole new level. And with that, that brings us to... Now when it comes to Samoa, you kind of have to know Fa'a Samoa, or the Samoan way. Every true Samoan knows about this, and in some way, shape, or form, to some degree, it affects their life. Everything you are and have, from land to water to birthright, are rooted back to the start. It's hard to understand, we'll explain in a bit. But first! Samoa has about 200,000 people and is the country with the highest population of native Polynesians in the world, and there are actually even more Samoans living abroad than there are in Samoa at about uh -huh. 600,000 globally. The country is made up primarily of native Samoan people, a Polynesian group at about 92% of the population. About 7% are Uranesians, whom are people that are mixed with European and Islander ancestry, in this case mostly half Samoan people. And the remainder of the population is mostly white and East Asian, coming from countries like South Korea and China. They use the Tala as their currency, they use the Type I plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. The main official language of the country, of course, is Samoan. It is the most prominently spoken Polynesian language in the world. And after that, English is co-official. Again, and they have a history with the British and New Zealanders, blah, blah, blah. Believe it or not, if World War I did not happen, Samoa actually might have been speaking German today. In any case, back to the confusing lineage thing. There's a saying in Samoan, Ole ala ile pule, ole tautua, which means the path to leadership is through service. Samoa has a very unique mm. system that fuses both modern and it's traditional ruling systems. Today, their government is classified as a parliamentary republic. However, it takes strongly into account the traditional fa'amatai system. What is the fa'amatai system? <laughs> well, it's actually pretty simple, see? It all starts out with the four original Paramount Chieftain Dynasty families that created the nation known as the Tama Ainga. There is also a fifth one for American Samoa, but technically that one doesn't count. Keep in mind, the head of state or ceremonial president or the Ole Ao Ole Malo always has one or more of these titles in his name. From these four dynasties, the 16 royal families or the Ainga Tupu were created. They were the ones that originally ruled the Itumalo. From there, the towns and villages have a Matai, which means chief. They meet in a Fono o Matai or council of other chiefs. You can be a regular Matai or a Matai Sili, which means high level chief. The chiefs come in two forms, the Ali'i or head chief and the Tulafale or orator chief who does all the talking, debating and announcing. Once you are a Matai, you are generally expected to hold the title until you die. On rare occasions will they cede the title. Keep in mind, off to the sides, there might also be a Pule Nu'u, a lower level assistant who helps facilitate the Matai duties. From there you have a Taupo, a chief's daughter or female relative, usually from the Ali'i. She holds an important role in preparing the Ava ceremony for the Matai events. Sometimes a male or Manaya can hold this role too, but often it is female. If a Matai like dies this. or is somehow unable to hold the title and it becomes available, Everyone in the immediate family is a suli or candidate heir to the Matai title. And a series of speeches or concessions begin to find who will become the next Matai. Both men and women can fill the role. However, statistically, about 90% of Matai have been men and about 10% have been female. From there, you have the unranked plain village people or the Tangatanu or the Taule Alea, usually made up of younger people or people uninterested in holding traditional titles. See? Simple. I'll I like that, bro. It's basically saying get your family together and see who's good at what. And then give everybody a job. Yeah, even the women. Everybody. You know, I love when the women has a job. Yeah, everybody is definitely screaming gang gang in a gang, good way. Gang gang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're affiliated. They all know what family. their role is, bro. Like, yes. when you see somebody pass, you respect them because of what they know what they offer to the family. Right. They just, yeah, that's, that's big. That's big. Yeah. So keep in mind, the Ava ceremony is incredibly important to Samoan culture. It's used for all occasions, but especially for the Matai title bestowing ceremonies, like when a new Matai becomes a Matai. The bitter drink is prepared by people called the Aumaga using a Tanoa bowl and wringing out the roots of the mildly psychoactive Kava plant. If you see this, then y'all know that some serious <laughs> is going on. Taking all of that into account, you can probably see by now that Samoa is very steadfast in maintaining tradition and culture. Faith-wise, Samoa is pretty religious. Religious, about 98% of the population is Christian, the largest groups being Protestant based. And often you might even find yourself in the middle of a prayer session. If you do, just be respectful, tone it down a little bit, or you can even participate if you want. Traditionally though, their ancestors- Yeah, we get that too. Like we have people come up to us and they be like, hey, can I pray for you today, sir? I'll be like, sure. They do it all the time. 
There's followed a form of Polynesian mythology that had numerous deities and spirits called Atua and Aitu. Interestingly enough, statistically Polynesia is one of the few areas on earth which has a birth rate of males that is higher than that of females. Today the ratio sits at around 1.07 to 1 in Samoa. Anyway, the traditional house is called a fale, a round thick thatched roof gazebo type of structure with no walls but blinds or nets can be draped down on the sides in between the columns holding up the roof. I mean the weather is almost warm consistently throughout the year so some some ones didn't really have to worry about insulation. Fine mats called toga are probably the most prized artifact of the country. They're used in all occasions. They're given away as gifts at weddings and ceremonies and so nice, on. Nice. They're used for everything, even when you want to seek forgiveness from someone that you've wronged. It's actually even a tradition for them to cover themselves in a toga outside of the person's house with their extended family members as a sign of atonement. Often you will see wow, people wearing wow. lava lava cloth. It's the national cloth of the country, worn both by men and women. Usually men will just drape it around their waists. Women will make it into a body wrap dress. During celebrations, ceremonies, whatever, you might often find men doing the Fa'a Taupati slap dance and the slower, more poised Siva dance by women. Speaking of which, they have a ton of cool festivals like the Fire Knife Festival, mm -hmm. the Faltasi Outrigger Canoe Competition, the Tafasila Fa'i Festival, and the biggest one, Tewila, held around September with the biggest activities, performances, and cuisine displays. And then you get to the traditional tattoos made out of shark's teeth and soot. And I'm getting kind of tired of all this. Actually, you know what, Art, just, just, Host, host this Glad segment. To see, I'm your second. You're, you're the last. Choice. You're the last resort. So yeah. The last resort. Now across Polynesia, you'll see tattoos everywhere, as they are a universal rite of passage. But each island and country has their own unique way of doing it. Unlike their cousins, the Maori, Samoan tattoos don't have spirals or curves. They're typically straight, geometric, oh, wow. and extend from the rib cage to the knees. Men's tattoos are yeah, called like... pea, and women's are called oh, really? malu. And for women, the tattoos only extend from the thighs to the knees. It's a well-known fact that so I just gotta say, that's what's up. Not too many cultures are going to say that, you know, one day you have to get tatted. Mm -hmm. There are some people that say, you know what, it's best you don't do that. Like, I right. know for us and our, like, coming up, um, tattoos wasn't something that I thought about getting. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not necessarily something that you just be taught for by your parents. Say, hey, you know what, I need you to tattoo your whole face. Right. I need you to put that tat on your eyebrow. Like, it's not right. told to us. It's kind of something that we just do. Yeah, but I, it's not in our culture. It's not in our culture, but I, I like it because it's in there. They have to get mm -hmm. inked up, so it's like, that's dope. That's yeah, dope. so what is the age that this happens? Because I know in... Okay, so I'm going to say it wrong. I was okay. going to say in Hawaii, that's what I was they mentioning. start at a certain age, but it's really when the tattoo artist... I forgot his name, but the tattoo artist, when he thinks of a tattoo... When For he's him? when you go to him, he can either accept or reject. It's something about a story. Yes, it has to yeah. be storyline based, but he has to, I guess, know you in some mm -hmm. form or fashion yeah. to give you the tattoo. But he can also reject you if he feel like you're not ready mm -hmm. to finalize that moment that you had in history with a tattoo. Yeah, that's and, dope. And what do the the tattoo mean? Because we see where it's located at, mm -hmm. but like, what is the meanings behind it? Yeah, let's love to know that are famous for their athletic prowess. Historically, the Polynesian men were trained to be big and strong for warfare and competition. I mean, they even had some really cool weaponry. They had an impressive assortment of clubs, axes, daggers, maces, and spears. Did I just say daggers? You said daggers. Did I just say daggers? <laughs> daggers! Anthropologists speculate that in addition to the possible genetic predisposition to gain more muscle, the abundance of available sustenance year-round on the island or seas around them allowed them to eat more and gain Gain more mass. On the downside, Samoa and other Pacific Islands have some of the highest rates of obesity as well as other health-related problems. In any case, Samoan and Pacific Islander men are top contenders for recruiting seasons in rugby and American football leagues. In the NFL, a Samoan male is often somewhere around 40 to 60 times more likely to be recruited against a non-Samoan counterpart, especially for a lineman or linebacker position because they are freaking huge, and the NFL wants huge people. You played football too, Art, didn't you? I did play football. Yes, I did. I might be considered big, but those guys are like really big. Uh, Speaking of big, Keith, he's been <laughs> eating a sandwich. <laughs> Jealous? Jealous no. I've never oh, spanked a belly like that before. <laughs> 
Oh, by the way, this is my buddy's band, Protein Collective. They're sick. Go check them out. Due to fair use laws, don't sue us or placement or whatever. Just don't sue them. As a Polynesian country, Samoa is heavily rooted in traditional sounds. As a country with no formal writing system, they depend heavily on oral tradition by documenting incidents through song and dance. Samoans love singing. Check out the Samoan High Note Challenge. Those videos are hilarious. <laughs> Much of the music can be performed with traditional instruments like these. And maybe some of these. Otherwise, today, modern genres like Samoan style R&B, poly reggae, really? and like jazz have made waves of popularity amongst the younger generation. Well, since I don't have a bass today, I guess I can uke my way on out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. And now it's time for the very condensed history segment of this episode. In the quickest way I can put it, Austronesians sail in and settle Samoa. The Four Tama Aiga chieftain dynasties begin. The legendary warrior queen Nanafuna starts the Matai system. The Aiga Tupu royal family is established. More of Polynesia is settled. Samoa is taken over and breaks free from the Tui Tonga Empire. First European contact from British and Dutch in the 1700s. Missionaries bringing Christianity. Americans, British, and Germans all claim parts of Samoa. First Samoan civil war fought between rival Samoan factions, Second Samoan Civil War, Germany takes over for 14 years, the East Islands become a US territory, Mao movement for independence, World War I, the UK creeps in, kicks out the Germans, Samoa becomes a territory of New Zealand, Spanish flu kills off a fifth of the population, 1962 independence, New Zealand's Helen Clark issues a formal apology for the incidents of the 20th century, Samoa's last king dies at age 95, Samoa switches time zones, Hobbs and Shaw save the world from evil, and here we are today. Some of the top notable people from Samoa that you guys suggested I mention in this episode include historical figures like Maliatoa Laupepa, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the first, Luaki Namulau Ulu Mamoe, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the second, as well as Cardinal Pio Taufinu U. Tons of professional athletes like these, lots of boxers like these, weightlifters, rugby players, American football players, wrestlers, people in the business, arts, and entertainment area like KJ Apa, <laughs> Robbie Magasiva. Jane Lagaaya, Beula Koale, Sima Urale, Nick Afoa, Paris Gobel, Albert Went, Aggie Gray, of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And of course, there are so many famous musicians and artists and bands like these. I'm just gonna put a bunch of them up on the screen. And finally, just some miscellaneous ones. Latafale Auva'a, Amy Maslin Miller, Chief Sielu Avea, and the Circus of Samoa. Yeah, for such a small island nation, Samoans have really stuck themselves out as Samoan special. <laughs> <laughs> nah, anyway, off to the last segment. The friend zone. Okay, friend now, zone. I was going to leave it to them to figure it out today. Really? Yeah, I mean, you... I don't think it's hard. Really? No. It's always difficult for me. You the know? U.S. is a friend. Well, we can always say U.S. Friends, friends are everybody. just about... Not everybody. You know, but, well... Hey. The U.S. is a friend. Okay. Okay. Who else? I don't see them having any... Any... Um... Not evils. Like, like people rivals. that don't like don't, rivals yeah, like that? Yeah, I don't see I don't see that either. either. I mean, it's, I especially knowing that they're like a whole recruiting spot. Right. Like, people going to pick them up, love on them. Yeah. Everything. The British is their friends. I don't know about their relationship with Germany. I'm not sure. They, I, I think they got a few side eyes. I don't think Maybe. they got no bad blood, though. Let's see. Let's get it. Ocean Island nations have always kind of been an interesting place when it comes to diplomacy because everything is so oh, spread apart that you kind of need anyone within the vast open Australia void to lean on. That being said, Samoa does have quite a few contacts in their Rolodex. Although Fiji is classified as Melanesian, their close proximity to Samoa helps them act as like a bridge between Melanesia and Polynesia. Business, travel, and trade are not only huge between them, both countries kind of piggyback off of each other as well. Fijians even have their own version of the Ava ceremony, and they even created their own Haka chant at sporting events 
like the Maori of New Zealand. Tonga is kind of like the best rival cousin. I mean, a long time ago, they did kind of take over Samoa in the Tui Tonga Empire, and there were numerous battles and wars between them, but that was like so long ago and everybody's forgotten about it. The two are close now. The countries and islands that culturally identify closest to Samoa, though, would probably be their immediate siblings, Tuvalu, and the three association states of New Zealand, Tokelau, Cook Islands, and Niue. Specifically, Tuvalu and Tokelau have the closest languages to Samoan. Some even nice. say it's just a dialect. They all have very similar customs and cultures, as well as family lineages, as their ancestors fled to nearby islands, intermarried, and kept in touch pretty well. New Zealand is their biggest business partner and specifically mm. plays a huge role in Samoa's affairs. And in 1962, they signed a treaty of friendship after independence. New Zealand has the largest Samoan population outside of Samoa. They are the largest hub of travel to Samoa. They are in charge of their military protection, and Samoa can request channels of communication to international organizations through New Zealand. When it comes to the ones closest to them though, Samoans will probably say the American territory of Samoa. Essentially, they are the same people. Sure, one speaks with a Kiwi accent, the other speaks with an American. One drives on the right side, the other on the left. One plays rugby, the other one plays American football. But otherwise, same people. American Samoa actually had the chance to join them back in 1966 when the UN threw out the option, but surprisingly, they voted to stay as a territory of the US and take on US benefits. Nonetheless, both of them follow the same Fa'a Samoa system of life, they both have the Matai and Fale culture, and overall, they get each other the best. In conclusion, you cannot have Polynesia without Samoa. Everything between New Zealand, Hawaii, and Easter Island starts here. They are masters of the ocean, and if you are lucky to meet a Samoan, technically, you could address them by saying, Your Majesty. Stay tuned, San Marino is coming up next. Yes, okay. sir. Hey, overall, I think the Samoans are loved everywhere. He mm -hmm. didn't mention the other places, but I do feel like they're loved everywhere. I mean, look at the celebrities, look at the mm -hmm. sports, look at the impact that they leave. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, some good stuff. Yeah, I did. It, I was an adult when I found found out that The Rock was some Samoan. Some yeah, movie. I think I learned that from his. Sorry um, if I mispronounced it. I think I learned that whenever he mentioned his dad. Yeah. 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 And the beast. I forgot his name, but the wrestler. Oh, I don't know his name, but yeah, the, I forgot the, his name. The hair mm, color. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, he was funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Troy, man, on the Stillers. That was my boy, Troy. Yeah. Okay, so because I, don't know <laughs> I okay. playing football, he was one of my favorite free safeties. So when I watched him, our safeties, whichever one y'all want to say, but when I watch him, he was like a motivation. So yeah. That's cool. Facts. I just imagine you, just running in in your little tight football pants. Anyway. This was a cool video. It was jam-packed with a lot yes, of sir. information. Learned so much about the Samoan culture. But there's nothing like learning it from you guys. Exactly. So let us know interesting facts about your culture. What you would like for us to learn with the, the family that we have over here. And we'll get into that. All right? Yes, 100%. So we hope you guys enjoy this video with us. Like this video. Subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way. As well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.